Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a Project Zomboy server that's both vanilla. I'll show you how to make a vanilla one and I'll show you how to make a modded one. Um, I know there are a few videos on vanilla modded servers, but I feel like, I don't know, I was looking up because I made one for me and my friends recently and there was not a lot of information that made it clear and easy for me to make mine. I kind of struggled a little bit. Which is crazy because I actually make a lot of game servers, Ark, Minecraft, Terraria, all them, all them things, all the, the computer stuff, blah, blah, blah. But this one was probably the most challenging I had to make. Now, some of y'all might have found it easy if you've done it already. I don't know. I just couldn't figure it out. But then I had an epiphany and I did, you know. But um, yeah, so I'm going to make this quick video. No edits, just quick to the point how to make a project zomboy server assuming dedicated server so you guys can host it for a few friends which is what i did so if you're in the same boat this video will be out there um how y'all doing by the way you know very chilling let me let me open steam let me open steam so listen first thing you're gonna do you're gonna come here you're gonna hit project zomboid on your workshop right you're gonna see but there's another option see when i was making mine there was an option that didn't pop up you're gonna come here and <clears throat> whole time I've owned Steam, I did not even know this was a thing. If you click this, you'll see there's games, soundtrack, and tools, right? I didn't know this was a thing. I had never had a reason to click up there. I'm just clicking and playing my games always. And when I would like look up tutorials or like look up things, they were clicking options that I wasn't even seeing and I was confused. If you click this tools, all types of tools show up that you, I don't even, I see Dino D-Day, I don't even own games that these servers are for or know what these are talking about, but you know, they give you everything. Now, if you go back to the Project Zomboy, see it then got pushed all the way down. Project Zomboy, now there is a new option under that. Project Zomboy dedicated server. You also have Project Zomboid modding tools if you're, you know, a modder. Excellent people, excellent respect. Modders uplift the community. Um, but you know, you're gonna click on dedicated server. And obviously for me, this is already installed so I can launch it, even though I don't launch it from here. You can click install and it will then install the dedicated server. Now I can pull up and show you what that actually looks like. You'll get this folder right here uh, in your main drive or wherever your Steam install folder is wherever you choose to download it. You know, uh, file, Steam, Steam as common, you know, Project Zomboid dedicated server. Now, I don't know who is gonna be running a 32-bit option. Most likely you are not running that, you are running the 64-bit. Now start server.bat64, this one will launch the game with Steam compatibility, so you'll probably be prompted to log in with Steam like once the command window pops up and you'll be prompted to make a password for the server for people who join. So that's probably optional. Um, so yeah, this launches with Steam API. This is for like workshop, this is for mods. It will auto sync. It will literally download the latest version of the mods every time you run the server, blah, 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 auto update, boom. Now this is without Steam. I can make a separate video with this, but I find the Steam one way easier, especially if you're playing modded. If you're not playing modded, um, and you're just playing vanilla, then you can go the no steam one if that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, uh, me personally, I run the with steam version and the 64. If you go ahead and click edit, then you will come here. Let me make sure my face is not in the way. So if you see these two lines right here, we got XMX, huh? XMS and XMX. So basically just in simple terms, the XMS is going to be handling like the upper limit for like the garbage collection, right? So you're setting like your memory, your RAM, blah, 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 uh, arguments for Java. Uh, like me personally, I have my, this one for the garbage collection, lower bound set at eight. And I have the maximum that the program, you know, should allocate to use as 10. Now this obviously will vary whatever machine you're on, you know, eight gigs, uh, 16, uh, 32, whatever, 64, no Nintendo. Um, and then another important thing that will actually not be there when you get this file, uh, this, like the server name, it will not be there. Like this will just be like that. For you to actually determine which world, which config, which I and I you want the Project Zomboy dedicated server to actually launch in, you gotta put dash server name, dash server name, and you gotta put the name of the world, right? And I'll show you where you get that uh, in a little bit. Now we're actually gonna, I'm gonna mute this. So this is not in my ears. Uh, we're gonna actually launch the game and I'll show you where the settings for that actually come from. 
it's actually really simple. If you want to config, if you want to add mods, if you want to tweak the things on your server, it's actually really easy. Uh, you literally can just do it inside your game client, like before you turn on your server. So then you'll come in here, let the game boot up, blah, blah, blah. You know, Project Zombie. Great game, by the way. Y'all know they're adding NPCs? Bro, they're adding NPCs to this game, both animals and human. I can't wait. Me and my friends are, are we already have a server. We're already active. There's like six of us. Four to four to six. Six is everybody shows up, but never it's probably four. Six people don't ever huh? Alright, bro. <laughs> if you click this host, now now you see server name work server. So this is the one I actually created. It's like when you host the non-dedicated, host the LAN. Um, these are those settings that it takes. So you see I got all this in here. Um, so you come in here. You got your Steam Workshop. This is how you add mods to your server. Uh, whatever you are subscribed to in your Steam, since this is linked with your Steam, is already added in this list. You add them through here. You can add something to the list. You can come here, remove something from the list. This is how you add full Steam Workshop content. Now, things that have like sub mods within the content, like for example, some of these have sub ones like vehicle spawn zones expanded. Vehicle spawn zones expanded has like, or like this one, for example, it has multiple sub mods, like optional ones that for you to configure it for your best experience. So you handle that here too. Like this one has so many different ones, right? So you will handle that. Uh, you can choose, pick and choose which mods you want. This is if you're doing mod, if you're vanilla, you're not even touching this. This is, you're just running a vanilla game. Then you can set all your world settings, all your stuff, all your things in here, right? Things for your mods, I have the mod configs. Then you're gonna save this. You'll save it. After you made it, you'll save it. And then you'll go back, right? Oh my goodness, this is gonna be ridiculous. Okay, you'll go back, quit this, quit this, there we go. And then you will uh, go back here, whatever you named that world file, You'll go here, server name, that server. Now, when I actually click this to launch, bring this up, it's gonna do its thing. It's logging Steam API, blah, 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 all the things it has to do. And then you'll see a period, now here you go. It's doing workshop content. So all those mods that were just in that Steam workshop in that mods list, it is now pulling all of those from Steam directly, pretty much. Um, well, it's pulling them from, it's so basically it, it checks it checks for updates and it puts them in a folder basically but every time there's an update it will you know change one of those folders but it's linked up with the steam workshop it will do all the modding stuff make sure everything's good make sure everything's good to go then it pretty much just boosts the server whatever options initializations you've done to your server it's going to launch with those every time um, one thing that frequently happens to me is when me and my friends join the server a lot of times the server actually updates mods at least for me updates mods before i've even done it on my client so a lot of times i get hit with that install or disconnect you just hit install it'll auto download you can get into your server or say you downloaded mods to your server and a friend does not have mods in their own steam they literally can log in still it'll just say hey this server has these mods you don't have them and it'll install or disconnect if they click install It'll literally in their game, install them all for them, and then they'll join the server. So, and there you go, see? Even with all those mods, it barely took that long at all to install or to launch. And um, that is the basics of making a Project Zomboid server. Now, if I were to go back into the client, go click join, I would be able to join my server. Now, if your internet is not port forwarded, this thing does try to auto do it. So if that works for you, that's cool. Uh, there's a setting for that in the settings of when you do it in the client. Uh, if that doesn't work for you though, two programs that I recommend using to kind of like make it, if you're just playing with friends, like for security reasons, if you're just playing with friends, obviously people that you trust, uh, log me and Hamachi. I can put a link for that in the description is a great uh, program for, I've been using it for a long time to, uh, there's plenty of tutorials on it too, for making uh, connections easier so people can connect you from long range. Um, like some of my friends are across the country, they can join no problem. And another program I would recommend is Zero Tier. Literally just found this one a couple weeks ago, but it's working pretty cool. So I would recommend trying that out. And those are the basics. The quick basics. How many minutes is that? 10 minutes? Those are the quick basics of making a Project Zomboy server. If you like the video, go ahead, please subscribe, please like. If you need any more information, or if there's anything that you're still curious about, leave questions in the comments for sure, because I know I was struggling. And, uh, yeah, have a good day, night, evening, morning, afternoon. Huh? Yeah, you know I got bars.
and they numerous like stars. About to do my thing, get bread, and maybe drive some flashy cars. You know who I am. I'm your boy Jake, and I'm not fake, but I don't know how much more y'all haters can take. Listen, I ain't done. I love to shake and bake, and then I freaking hit them with the frying pan. You know I'm the man.